Louis T. Welcome to the command post. You know what it is. Post up. Take command. I, of course, am your commander in chief, Louis T. Thank you for joining me. Uh, today's episode is twofold. A couple of items on the docket. First things first, Washington signed a brand new offensive lineman, Jared Jones Smith. Um, if, you know, the name rung a bell. And so I went back in the archives, dug through the crates a bit and found a couple of my old notebooks from the 2018 draft. And there he was. And th this was when I was in the draft heavy, right? When I was breaking down every team's draft, I was looking at just about every single prospect. I thought this guy would get drafted. Um, you know, what was crazy is what stood out to me about him, particularly in that draft, was he had this gruesome injury back in 2015. Um, he, uh, when you hear people say they blew out their knee, he literally blew out his knee, he tore three different ligaments. His tibia bone got twisted and it actually blocked one of his major arteries. And doctors said, look, if we didn't get to you fast enough, we were going to have to amputate your leg because the rest of your leg wasn't getting blood flow because your tibia bone twisted and was blocking one of your major arteries. So it was one of the most gruesome injuries I had ever heard of at that time. Obviously, Alex Smith would come and knock that thing out of the water some months later, but, um, you know, in 2018 rather. Uh, but I didn't read about it until 2018 when I was preparing for the draft. I thought he would get drafted. He actually had a solid career at Pitt. And he didn't get drafted. He went undrafted and, um, you know, he went through the gauntlet, right? And, you know, this is the thing that I love about what has happened with all of these alternate leagues is that it gives guys an opportunity to keep their dream alive because sometimes players fall through the cracks, you know, and it's not always going to be on your first or your second or your third attempt that you finally stick in the league i.e. Taylor Heineke. James Harrison is probably the greatest example of that with how many times he was cut before finally really latching on with the Pittsburgh Steelers and, and having a hell of a career. Um, you just want to see guys continue to get opportunities and not have to go to Canada or somewhere else to do it. And that's what the AAF, you know, before it was defunct, now the USFL and the XFL are providing these players. They're giving them an opportunity to continue their careers, showcase their talents, and give themselves a chance to get back into the NFL, which is ultimately the goal for these players that are playing in these alternate leagues. So uh, Jared Jones Smith is one of those rare cases of guys getting an opportunity in, in one of these alternate leagues, the XFL. And he took full advantage of it. He played with the St. Louis Battlehawks, ended up being uh, named to the XFL, all XFL team as an offensive lineman. So meaning he was one of the best five offensive linemen in their league. Um, he's been in the league in the NFL, as I mentioned, undrafted, ended up signing with the Houston Texans. That didn't work out. Miami Dolphins, San Francisco 49ers, Vegas Raiders, Baltimore Ravens. He's done, he's done his full tour around the NFL. So, um, you know, intermingled in that, he, he did a little stint with the AAF, with the uh, San Antonio team. Um, obviously, that league went defunct, and so, boom, he was back in the NFL for a brief spell. Um, that didn't work out. Went to the XFL with the St. Louis Battlehawks, as I just mentioned. Uh, had a great season, and now he's getting another opportunity now with the Washington Commanders. So we'll see if this is finally uh, the third charm for him in terms of leaving, coming into the NFL, leaving, coming back to the NFL, leaving again. And now this is the third time coming back to the NFL after going to a different league. Maybe this time will be his charm and he'll stick. But I want to say this, because normally when we sign guys like this, I dismiss them. In order to bring Jared Jones Smith on board, they had to get rid of someone. They got rid of Drew Himmelman. A lot of you were, oh, Drew Himmelman, 6'8", this, that, and the third. And I'm like, bro, he's not making the team. He had been here last year. So they got rid of Drew Himmelman, and they bring in Jared Jones Smith. And I actually think this is what I ultimately think he's being brought in to do because this guy has 36-inch arms, which, again, 33 is what you're looking for as a baseline, right? Anything over 35, and you've got branches for arms, and people absolutely love that. This guy's 6'7", 33-inch arms, or 36-inch arms. And I actually think he's moving better now than he ever has before. So I think he's gotten better. Look, he's not the most athletically gifted tackle in the world. Uh, his pass pro is much better and, and far ahead of his run blocking ability, but he can get the job done. He reminds me a lot of Cornelius Lucas, if we're being honest. Cornelius Lucas is a, a mountain of a man with long arms, not the greatest athlete, but 
serviceable enough. I honestly think they're looking for a co-Luke replacement. Now, I'm not saying that it's imminent that he's no longer on the roster, like they have to do it this year, but Cornelius Lucas is 31 years old. They brought in Trenton Scott as a guy that they think can be a swing tackle as well. He's 29. They're looking to get younger at that position. You know what Ron likes. He likes young players, and he wants to keep this roster relatively youthful. And so I think, you know, Cornelius Lucas is on the last year of his deal anyway. So it's not like, you know, Cole Luke is 26 years old, and they really like him as a swing tackle. He, he's like our new Ty Inseki. Remember, Ty Inseki was like 35 years old, 34, 35, 36 years old when he was here in Washington, right? So – I think they're looking for a younger version of Cornelius Lucas. Jarrett Jones Smith may be that for them. We'll, we'll find out if, in fact, he is able to check that box for them. There, he's by nature he's a right tackle um, by by trade, but he can play both left and right. Played both in college, and you know he's moved around in the NFL, and you know I, I think he can do both. He's probably more so a right tackle than anything else. But at the end of the day. If he can come in here, and I think he's going to have a legitimate shot to win a roster spot. This is not just another, you know, swing at a guy, and, and if you hit it, cool. If you miss, whatever type of deal. You know, this isn't a blind throw at the dartboard with the dart, and, and if it sticks, great. Wow, what a find. If not, you know, you keep it pushing. I think they legitimately think they may have uncovered a gym here. You know, so we'll see. If he's able to make the roster, I won't dismiss him is what I'm telling you, essentially. I'm not going to just say, oh, it's another guy that's not going to make the team. I'm not dismissing him. He has a legitimate shot of making this football team is what I'm trying to tell you. Now, he's going to have to beat out a guy like Cornelius Lucas probably to do it, more likely than not. And I don't think they're comfortable with parting ways with Cornelius Lucas. This is not the year to do that, I don't think. So, Maybe he'd be beating out a Trenton Scott or somebody like that because you got to think about the tackle situation. Assuming Andrew Wiley is a tackle, and that's not a safe assumption to make yet because I still think they're playing around with the five guys that are ultimately going to start. And if they can find a right tackle, that's the thing. If this guy comes in here, if Jared Jones Smith comes in here and he's the best right tackle we've got on the roster and he wows them in camp, He'll be at right tackle, and they'll kick Andrew Wiley inside to right guard, and there you have it, right? So, like, don't make any assumptions quite yet as to what's going to happen. But I, I truly believe that you've got um, Charles Leno Jr. on the left side, and right now Andrew Wiley's your right tackle, your starting right tackle. And I think Cornelius Lucas is penciled in as your swing tackle, but I think there is one more position potentially for another tackle. Now, they would like that other tackle to have versatility to maybe play guard, right? Which is a Braden Daniels type of guy. So, again, that's why I don't think there's space on the roster for both Cornelius Lucas and a Jared Jones Smith. I think it's one or the other because Braden Daniels, I think, is going to be that swing tackle type of player that can also play guard that they're going to keep on the roster as that fourth and final tackle. And he can also play guard, which also helps. And then we know they're going to have the interior. The rest of those offensive line spots are going to be dedicated to the interior of the offensive line. So um, we'll see what ultimately happens. Um, I'm just telling you, this is a guy that it, it should be a name that you should be watching come training camp and beyond. Um, anyway, uh, with that in mind, seeing them do this and, and the shuffling they did with the roster to accommodate Jared Jones Smith, I said, with everything pretty much being done now, I think the dust is settled and the smoke is cleared and we kind of feel like, okay, this is what the roster is going to look like up until training camp at least. I don't think we're going to see any real big movement. Um, I don't think we're going to see anybody get released um, that you know really forces Washington to make a tough decision. There may be one or two post-1 June cuts that maybe rattle the cage a bit, but I don't think it's going to be anything major. And thus... I got to thinking, I, was, I said, you know what? Who are some guys that are in roster danger? You know, I don't like the term on the bubble until we get to July into August. Uh, that, that's an August, that's a summertime phrase. We're not there yet. Who is in roster jeopardy right now, okay? 
after seeing what has been done in the draft and, you know, seeing what they've done in the theme of the offseason, who are some guys that aren't guaranteed anything going into camp? Um, I've got a list of six guys, actually, but I want you to come up with a list of five. Five. Give me five players on the roster. And look, can we just agree that Andrew Norwell doesn't need to be in this discussion? Can we just agree that he's on the roster technically, but he's not going to be on the roster? Can we just agree on that so that you don't have to add him on your list? Because I think that's kind of redundant at this point. Similar to how we felt about Chase Rouye, how we kind of knew the end was near. Like, we still don't really know what they're waiting on with. You know, Andrew Norwell, I just think they're trying to make sure that they get through camp and everything healthy first before they do something rash, all right? But if they push come to shove and they need the money, I think they could just cut Andrew Norwell. But they haven't gotten to a point where they've had to do that, so they haven't because they don't have to until they need to, and they haven't had to yet, okay? So at some point, he's going to be removed from the roster, Okay. I think we all feel pretty safe in assuming that. Now, they haven't done it yet, so it's not going to get done until whenever it happens. But you don't need to add him on your list is essentially what I'm saying. Okay? Give me five guys that you think are in roster danger after everything that has been done with free agency, the draft, and everything that is done. Now tell me who are some guys that you just – don't know if they're going to make this football team. If things shake out the way that the organization with the moves they've made uh, go the way that they think they're going to go, who are some guys that are probably going to be on the outside looking in? Give me five guys. I've got six. Andrew Norwell is not included on this list. He is not invited to this party. Okay? Sorry, not sorry. So don't give me Andrew Norwell as one of your names. We all agree he's not going to be here. Okay? So you don't have to put him on the list. Let's just pretend that he's not here. Looking forward to your responses. We will have a very lengthy discussion about this on tomorrow's show on the Command Post Live tomorrow night. I'm looking for your responses um, and some of the good ones. And if you leave me a detailed description as to why, I'll read those on uh, the air tomorrow night. We can discuss. So looking forward to your comments there. It should be a very spirited uh, conversation uh, nonetheless. And I I've already told you guys this, and I feel very strongly. This is the best roster we've had in Washington since 2016. Going into the 2016 season, coming off of the playoff um, you know, division win and the playoff uh, berth and the, the game against the uh, pa uh, Packers. Remember the, the hype for that 2016 season? Um, and then Antonio Brown came in in week one and twerked on us, and that was that. <laughs> we were never the same after that. Uh, this kind of feels like this is the best roster we've had since that season. And I'd say that this roster is way better than that one from the standpoint of defensively. We were never, ever as good from a talent standpoint as we are right now. Now, that's on paper. We got to go out and execute. But we were never even remotely close talent-wise defensively to what we have right now offensively it they're they're very similar and that team had a better quarterback at least a one that had established himself in Kirk Cousins we still are yet to see what you know Sam Howe will be even though you know I feel Sam's gonna come in and crush it but we'll see what happens anyway I digress you guys know what it is it's the command post man post up take command y'all know what it is I'll see you guys tomorrow night live for the command post 930p um and uh for those of you who are viewers of the louis t network podcast i'll see you later on today anyway you guys have a good one take care louis t. Network.